Hello, Internet. Andrew Potter back again for another episode of Life of Pi by Jan Martel. Today we will be reading... Uh, let's just do... Let's do chapters 21, or 20 and 21, because I think we can get that through in the half hour time enough. Um, so here we go. He was a Sufi, a, mu a Muslim mystic. He sought fauna, union with God, and his relationship with God was personal and loving. If you take two steps towards God, he used to tell me, God runs to you. He was a very plain-featured man, with nothing in his... Uh, sorry about that. I just thought I was, uh, I thought I'd all not read chapter 19 yet. Um, he was a very plain-featured man, with nothing in his looks or in his dress that made him cry hark. I'm not surprised I didn't see him the first time we met. Even when I knew him very well, encounter after encounter, I had difficulty recognizing him. His name was Sadish. It was Sadish Kumar. These are common names in Tamil, Tamil Nadu, so the coincidence is not so remarkable. Still, it pleased me that his pious baker, as plain as, it pleased me that this pious baker, as plain as a shadow and an, and of solid health, and the communist biology teacher and science devotee, the walking mountain on stilts, sadly afflicted with polio in his childhood, carried the same name. Mr. and Mr. Kumar taught me biology and Islam. Mr. and Mr. Kumar led me to study zoology and religious studies at the University of Toronto. Mr. and Mr. Kumar were the prophets of my Indian youth. We prayed together and we practiced di di cure the recitation of the 99 revealed names of God. He was a ha ha Hafiz, who, one who knows the Quran by heart, and he sang it in slow, simple chant. My Arabic was never very good, but I loved its sound. The guttural eruptions and long flowing vowels rolled just beneath my comprehension like a beautiful brook. I gazed into this brook for long spells of time. It was not wide, just one man's voice, but it was as deep as the universe. I describe Mr. Kumar's place as a hovel, yet no mosque, church, or temple ever felt so sacred to me. I sometimes came out of the bakery feeling heavy with glory. I would climb onto my bicycle and pedal that glory through the air. One such time I left town and on my way back at a point where the land was high and I could see the sea to my left and down the road a long ways I suddenly felt I was in heaven. The spot was in fact no different from when I had passed it not long before. But my way of seeing it had changed. The feeling, a paradoxical mix of pulsing energy and profound peace, was intense and blissful. Whereas before the road, the sea, the trees, the air, the sun all spoke differently to me. Now they spoke one language of unity. Tree took account of road, which was aware of air, which was mindful of sea, which shared things with sun. Every element lived in harmonious relation with its neighbor, and all was kith and kin. I knelt a mortal. I rose an immortal. I felt like the center of a small circle coinciding with the center of a much larger one. Atman met Allah. Ooh, that just sounds cool. Just this way of, you know, this way of bringing his uh, religious beliefs together is, is wonderful. Pretty good. One other time I felt God so close to me. It was in Canada. Represent! Much later. I was visiting friends in the country. It was winter. I was out alone on a walk on their large property and returning to the house. It was clear. It was a clear, sunny day after a nightfall of snowfall. After a night of snowfall, all nature was blanketed in white. As I was coming up to the house, I turned my head. There was a wood, and in that wood, a small clearing, a breeze, or perhaps it was an animal had shaken a branch. Fine snow was falling from the air, gl glittering in the sunlight. In that falling golden dust, in the sun's flash clearing, I saw the Virgin Mary. Why her? I don't know. My devotion to Mary was secondary, but it was her. Her skin was pale. She was wearing a white dress and blue cloak. I remember being struck by their pleats and folds. When I say I saw her, I don't quite mean it literally, literally though she did have a body and color. I felt. I saw her. A vision beyond vision. I stopped and squinted. She looked beautiful and supremely regal. She was smiling at me with loving kindness. After some seconds, she left me. My heart beat with, with fear and joy. The presence of God is the finest of rewards. Um, 
I don't know. I, I love how it's described. I love how it's, uh, you know, it, it, you know, there's this joining of Mr. Kumar and Mr. Kumar that bring together Pai's uh, two university degrees, you know, his two majors. All that is great. The serene uh, description of how that feels mixed with the what he sees when he thinks he sees the Virgin Mary. Uh, I don't know. Those profound religious description of moments is lost on me, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say it's it's well written. It's well written. It's just this emotional context that I can't connect to is, is unfortunately what's there. Chapter 21. This is one of those italics chapters, so I don't know when this one is happening. I am sitting in a downtown cafe after thinking. I have just spent most of an afternoon with him. Our encounters always leave me weary of the glum contentment that characterizes my life. What were those words he used that struck me? Ah yes. Dry, wheatless, yeastless fact factuality. The better story. I take pen and paper and out and write. Words of divine consciousness, moral exclamation, lasting feelings of elevation, elation, joy, a quickening, quickening of the moral sense, which strikes one as more important than an intellectual understanding of things, an alignment of the universe among, along moral lines, not intellectual ones, a realization that the founding principle of existence is what we call love, which works itself out sometimes not clearly, not cleanly, not immediately, nonetheless, in ineluctab ineluctably? I pause. What if God's silence? I think it over. I add, an intellectual confound, yet a trusting sense of presence and an ultimate purpose. But again, I don't know what to think of those chapters. I So I guess this is after his journey, and he's writing about the journey, maybe, is the best I can guess. Um... I don't know. I don't know. Um, again, I love the the description of the environment, which is one of the first real times we've seen him, uh, Jan Martel, really go into description of setting. Usually it's um, a description of emotional setting, if that makes sense. It's him describing where his character is at, uh, him describing what's really happening, what's going on, um, all that kind of stuff. Not, um, not where the character is physically. Uh, and with that, that is the end of this video. If there was anything you wanted me to talk about uh, in more detail for the finale episode, um, feel free to comment that below. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thank you and have a good night.